Your Excellency, President von der Leyen, Your Excellency, President Anastasiadis, esteemed ministers of the Republic of Cyprus, dear Rector Christofidis, dear guests from the European Commission, dear students, ladies and gentlemen, we are here in this temple of knowledge, the University of Cyprus, 18 months after a global pandemic changed the way we live, work, and study in a way that no one could possibly foresee. The EU reaction was quick, decisive, and effective. A European program like no other, with financial means of up to 800 billion euros, was put in a place for the next generation EU. A program that will help recover from the crisis and build resilience for the future. Member States here yes, have devised their own national plan for recovery and resilience. Cyprus will receive 1.2 billion euros in grants and loans to implement by 2026 its national plan, Kipros to Avrio, Cyprus tomorrow. A set of crucial investment and reform measures to put forward by Cyprus to emerge stronger from the COVID-19 pandemic. And today, we have the honor and the pleasure to see this plan approved by the European Commission. And what are the main points of this plan? Six key ministers of the government present the aspects under their portfolios in a video that we will watch right now together. We've learned how to move forward, to move with steady, solid steps. This is what has led us to where we are today and what gives us the strength to reach a tomorrow that we ourselves create. With 2026 as our horizon, we're implementing a big vision towards a common tomorrow for all of us, a tomorrow that's better for all of us. With targeted actions, we're formulating a new growth model to strengthen our economy, promoting reforms that strengthen the national health system and investing in education, in line with the needs of the modern workforce market. We are putting our country on a new dynamic path with green growth and digital transformation, becoming resilient to the challenges of the future. Vision has become a plan and the plan has turned into action. Our national recovery and resilience plan constitutes an ambitious but realistic plan for the effective utilization of 1.2 billion euros aiming to strengthen the country's potential for economically, socially and environmentally sustainable long-term growth and welfare. The plan is the result uh, of an extensive work by the competent authorities, an extensive uh, consultation with all stakeholders and the highly productive collaboration with the Commission services for which we are grateful. The main challenge lying ahead now is the timely and successful implementation of the plan, towards which we are already concentrating all our efforts. The Cypriot economy is expected to significantly benefit in both terms of growth and employment through the implementation of the 133 reforms and investments included in the plan. Through the RRF support, this historical place hosting us today the Fanaromeni School will be renovated to the House of Architecture of the University of Cyprus and serve to the regeneration and the revitalization of the Nicosia inner city. The RRF is a once in a lifetime opportunity for us to intrinsically link commerce and industry with green growth, green energy and a circular way of working. Our plans to open up the electricity market connected to mainland Europe with an electricity cable, introduce large energy storage systems and increase renewables in our energy mix will reduce emissions and prices. Coupled with incentives to renovate building stock, save energy and adopt a circular model, this will increase our businesses' competitiveness and their export capability. By working together, we can change Cyprus for us and for future generations. Supporting health is a top priority of our government and this is reflected in our National Recovery and Resilience Plan with interventions aiming to address the challenge of universal access to high-quality health care in Cyprus. The first policy axis 
of the plan aims to strengthen the effectiveness, accessibility, and overall resilience of the healthcare sector by supporting the recently introduced national health system. Various interventions are planned all across Cyprus, such as the modernization and digitalization of health care infrastructure and equipment, as well as upskilling opportunities for health workers. Humanity is at a turning point. Our environment, the essence of life on Earth, must finally be placed at the center of our policy and action. Our resilience and recovery plan includes specific reforms and projects that serve our vision for a green and sustainable Cyprus. These projects focus on areas where Cyprus faces serious challenges, namely achieving climate neutrality, protecting biodiversity and forests, managing our water resources effectively, applying the principles of circular economy, protecting our marine environment. The reforms and projects of the Resilience and Recovery Plan will contribute towards our overarching goal, adapting a more sustainable development model for the benefit of humans and all forms of life. The Recovery and Resilience Facility is instrumental to Europe's recovery and growth. Digital transformation is a key lever for economic competitiveness and social prosperity. This is a bold step forward to institutionalize change and digitally transform our economies and societies. Our national plan is an approach fit both for today's realities and tomorrow's challenges. Cyprus is allocating 23% of its total budget on digital in areas such as e-government, connectivity, digital skills and digital transformation of businesses. This translates to new jobs, a more sustainable economy and a more inclusive society. This is the time for action in shaping Europe's digital future. In the context of the Cyprus Recovery and the Resilience Plan, we aim at contributing to energy efficiency and climate stability by upgrading school buildings through investment in photovoltaic panels and thermal installations. At the same time, pursuing early childhood education, we extend compulsory pre-primary education starting from the age of four. Digital transformation is the other strategic target of the recovery plan. In this direction, we upgrade classrooms in all schools to digital by installing the relevant hardware and software and providing full support and maintenance. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an ambitious plan that Cyprus has put together for its future, for the future of its next generation. And uh, here today we have five young people, just graduated and young researchers who have accomplished <coughs> highest honors in their domains. They have questions for their future. They have ideas and hopes, and they are here to present them and discuss them with the two presidents. First, I invite Dr. Diamando Hasapi, a medical graduate. Please, Diamando. Hello. Uh, my name is Diamando Kasapi, and I am a medical school graduate. It is my honor to be here with you today and a great opportunity to discuss our concerns. I have a question for President von der Leyen. Uh, how can the European Union effectively address a fourth wave of the pandemic and to what extent do we trust the existing vaccines given that the masks and measures are apparently returning in countries with high vaccination coverage? Yes, thank you very much. First of all, um, I'm happy to see that the two of us are colleagues. So this is the next generation and we are really counting on you. Um, indeed, if we look forward now to the, um, to the near future, the most important part is uh, to prepare for a potential next wave by vaccinating. And thanks God, we have effective and safe vaccines. Uh, we, you remember, dear Nikos, that uh, a year ago, it was for us the utmost importance to have a broad portfolio of vaccines because we knew that not every vaccine will be, or every production research will be successful. And indeed, um, out of the six different companies we um, had a contract with, 
Um, we, had not, we have now BioNTech Pfizer who are delivering and successful. We have Moderna and we have AstraZeneca and right now Johnson & Johnson is coming. So we have a quite broad portfolio of four different vaccines, all of them approved by the European Medicines Agency and as you know as a medical doctor through clinical trials and evidence and data that are reliable. And we see so far that the vaccines protect also against the variants. The Delta variant is much more transmissive. That's the reason why we see now uh, rapidly increasing um, infection numbers. But the good part is, as we have mainly our elderly population fully vaccinated, the vulnerable uh, in the population fully vaccinated, and also the frontline workers. Um, I heard that Cyprus has 65% of the population. More than 65%. Even more than 65% yes. vaccinated, so protected. Um, we know that's a second point that we still have to wear our mask, keep the social distancing, the hygiene we've learned. That part seems uh, so, e uh, so simple, seems so boring, but it's very effective as you know also. If I may say for the mid and long term, um, we have contracted already with BioNTech Pfizer a big contract for the future, either for a boost or if in case a variant comes that is not responsive to the existing vaccines, we are able with these mRNA technologies to rapidly adapt, develop a new vaccine and be protected this time much better <coughs> and much earlier for potential uh, new vaccination. So vigilance has to be there. We have to be disciplined but we are protected by vaccination and therefore my recommendation to everyone, mainly the young people, vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. Thank you, President von der Leyen. And now Andreas Chulupas, a computer science graduate. Um, good morning. I'm Andreas Chulupas and I have recently graduated from the Department of Computer Science of the University of Cyprus. Uh, it is my honor to participate in this dialogue and be given a chance to express my thoughts. Uh, the recent wildfires experienced by Cyprus have resulted in the loss of human lives, enormous economic damage, and then deforestation of large areas of our island. Concerned by these events, I would like to suggest the targeted provision of a portion of the RRF uh, funds uh, focusing on forecasting, prevention, and uh, rapid response to such events and natural disasters in general. Uh, emerging technologies such as machine learning can definitely help. Uh, Mr. President Stasiadis, how will uh, the Republic of Cyprus use the RRF funding to address these problems? Um, thank you very much, Andreas. Our country has indeed uh, experienced an unprecedented catastrophe, uh, bearing in mind the huge environmental disaster, the loss of um, uh, properties, uh, but most importantly, the loss of the uh, life of four people. I fully share your concern. Uh, already our efforts are uh, focused on measures to foresee and prevent to the extent possible such disaster as well as uh, enhance our capability and capacity to immediately respond. Now as regards, uh, I will try to be short as uh, possible because the program of uh, President uh, uh, von der Leyen is uh, very um, limited. Um, coming to the, taking into account this uh, high risk, the competent authorities uh, identified, they incorporated and incorporated in our national recovery plan, and this was your question, the need to promote investments towards uh, further upgrading our capabilities to cope with increased future uh, uh, fire hazards. Such investments aim at enabling uh, the faster and more effective uh, intervention of the fire fighting forces in the country, hence reducing the possibility of small uh, forest fires growing, big and threatening the forest and the national environment in general, as uh, well as the citizens and of course their properties. To this end, uh, one of the recovery plan's investments uh, will support the purchase of a number of vehicles, equipment and the provision of relevant training and other services, but as well as the investment into end 
also includes the purchase of a single engine firefighting aircraft, taking into account the assessment of a technical committee studying the relevant needs of the Republic. This will be funded by the recovery plan. Another aircraft, it will be uh, by, by our own resources, I mean, from the national budget. Thank you, President Anastasiadis. Dr. Yolanda Englezu is a Marie Curie Fellow. Hmm? Um, hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Yolanda Englezu. I hold a PhD in statistics, and I am a EU Marie Curie Fe Fellow. So my research now focuses on uh, intelligent transportation systems and, and their potential to uh, reduce uh, traffic congestion and air pollution. And my uh, question is uh, for President von der Leyen. So what is the vision of the Commission regarding the green perspective of trans transportation? And do you um, uh, foresee that the EU 2030 climate and energy targets will be achieved earlier, earlier due to the green plan and the green transition and the resilience and recovery plan? Mm. Yes, thank you very much for that question. Um, <coughs> indeed, you know that we have a very ambitious uh, plan for transport for 2030, but I must say uh, you were so kind to show me um, right before this session uh, what digitization uh, and smart connectivity does or is able, capable to do, and that's the future that you have shown me. So fantastic, the next generation shows uh, to us what digitization, where you invest in, combined with the European Green Deal uh, can do. And if I uh, might mention a few points, we know we have to move towards zero emission vehicles. So here a lot of research is going into alternative fuels or the electrification. We want to be technology neutral because we think as much as research and innovation capacity in that topic, but the best on the competitive market uh, will then uh, be the front runner. That's point number one, but you also showed that a planning for smooth traffic in the crowded areas in the the urban areas mainly, is extremely important also uh, to reduce congestion and therefore to reduce pollution um, so, uh, and to, to save energy over time if we have electrified uh, vehicles, for example. Then infrastructure is important, you know that too, so we are investing heavily with, the, um, with Next Generation EU into charging station, 3 million till 2030, the national governments will complement so there too, it is important for us uh, to, to improve. And overall, your example shows that the European Green Deal, putting a price on carbon, for example, through an ETS system on uh, road and transport is one part, but the digitization um, is the crucial factor to make the European Green Deal a success. And in the transport sector, you were excellently showing me that. Thank you, President von der Leyen. And now, Dr. Artemis Kondu, a research infrastructure manager at Kios. Please. Yeah, thank you, Lydia. Uh, so my name is Artemis Kondu, and I hold a PhD in mechanical engineering. And I currently manage the uh, research infrastructure uh, development in uh, Research Innovation Center of Excellence. So in, in our research center, we um, collaborate with the uh, public sector to provide our technological expertise uh, for several measures included in the Recovery and Resilience Plan. So in your, ass in your assessment, Mr. President, uh, what would be the contribution uh, by research uh, in the implementation of the plan? And what would be the impact uh, for young researchers in terms of career opportunities and future jobs? Thank, thank you. you very much, Artemis. And thank you very much for your comments. Um, a community with, uh, and I'm talking, we are talking about uh, uh, our young researchers community, a community with active uh, uh, participation in all our efforts towards uh, the transformation uh, to sustainability, uh, which is on, in the core of the recovery and uh, resilient, uh, resilience fund. Responding now to your uh, inquiry, the vital contribution 
of research on both uh, the society and the economy has been identified on, the time, on time by the government, which uh, fully supports the research work in Cyprus with special incentives, including, of course, tax ones. Uh, we can certainly take note of a series of remarkable achievements by our research and uh, research community in terms of our country's participation in European and international uh, funding programs with consequent uh, significant impacts, not only in the field of uh, research and innovation, but in other areas as well. As uh, rightly noted, uh, our centers of excellence have a key role to play in both further enhancing the country's research and innovation potential, but also in supporting uh, other key players to effectively uh, participate in the economic and social transformation that will lead the country to a green, digitized, uh, innovative, and competitive economy, economy uh, that utilizes uh, its research and innovation results. Um, a series of measures, including uh, in our recovery and resilience uh, plan, aim to strengthen the links between research organization and enterprises, increase uh, intensity in research and development activity, as well as to make all uh, publicly funded research infrastructure accessible to the entire ecosystem. Now, that is why I expect that uh, the promotion of a research and innovative uh, innovation culture to the whole spectrum of the economy will create the necessary conditions and more opportunities for training further investments in research and innovation with consequent impacts in the creation of new jobs in all fields where research and innovation is um, connected. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, President Anastasiadis. And uh, finally, Andrea Stiglianou, a postgraduate student from the Young Universities for uh, the Future of Europe. Hello, my name is Andrea Stiglianou, and I'm a postgraduate student from the University of Cyprus holding a degree in education. My question is towards the President of the European Commission. And I wanted to ask, how does the European Commission intend to support the long-term sustainability of the European University alliances? And to this end, how will the RFF help to further support and resolve any issues with the skills mismatch that may occur? Yes, so first of all, uh, the European Universities Alliance is for us very important. And important sometimes shows uh, the place in the budget. <laughs> so it has a very prominent place in the budget with one billion that will be invested in the European budget we have uh, started right now. Uh, for us of utmost importance. Now the second part of your question, uh, the skills mismatch. Um, here for example, uh, this plan right now, your national recovery plan is the 15th. We are approving in Europe and up to today for example, so up to the 15th plan, others are to come, we see that there is uh, an investment in the recovery and resilience plans already of 45 billion in education, skilling, reskilling and upskilling. And there's a second part so far that we see 15 billion going into labor services or employment services that exactly match the demand from the labor market and su the supply, so that people who uh, are interested in topics get the skilling and the, the labor services know exactly what kind of um, company is searching for exactly that skill. So here too, a smart combination, of course often digitized, uh, improves the market situation for all those people who want to contribute to the labor market but need the right skills and therefore next generation EU is investing heavily in that part. Thank you very much, Ursula. Thank you, Your Excellencies. Thank you for your participation and for your clear and promising answers to the questions and ideas uh, of our future generation. As uh, President von der Leyen would say, 
Long live Europe. <laughs> I invited you all now to proceed to the next part of today's visit, the press conference on the approval of Cyprus Recovery and Resilience Plan that will take place in the library building. Thank you. Thank you very much.